Good morning, everyone. Jennifer LeClaire here with you, Senior Leader of the Awakening House of Prayer Global Movement. Our church, our global headquarters, our house of prayer, prophecy rooms, healing rooms, everything is down here centered in Fort Lauderdale, one of the gateways to the world. And we are pressing in for revival, hence the name Awakening House of Prayer. I want to remind you of the Awakening Fast, the Awakening Fast for personal awakening and national awakening awakeninghouseofprayer.com slash fast awakeninghouseofprayer.com slash fast get in on that kickoff get the resources that are going to bless you if you want to track with me throughout the fast awakeninghouseofprayer.com slash fast god is good you can watch our services online first service 10 47 a.m second service 1 30 p.m only the a.m is online you can watch that at ahop.online ahop.online we've got some exciting stuff coming down the pike where we're building in quiet like a groundhog and we'll pop up with some surprises when god is finished doing the work but it's going to be good somebody say it's going to be good amen I'm the founder of the Ignite Network, ignitenow.org, ignitenow.org. We are a family of prophetic believers pressing in to prophetic lifestyle, prophetic growth, prophetic expression, understanding what God is saying through various means and mechanisms and supporting one another in the journey. You can join that family, that company at ignitenow.org. Org. I'm the author of our devotional Victory Decrees, Daily Prophetic Strategies for Spiritual Warfare Victory. And today's devotion is titled, Jesus is Stronger Than Jezebel. Oh, my, 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 my. Jesus is stronger than Jezebel. Oh, Jesus. Now you see why we're having so much resistance. Oh, kate, robo, bo, shakata. Jesus is stronger than Jezebel. And here's what I heard the Lord say. Jesus is spoken of with such reverence. Don't be ignorant to this devil's devices, but don't glorify this principality in your midst. You can resist the maneuvers of Jezebel when you break agreement with it. Jesus rebuked the church at Thyatira for tolerating Jezebel. You can't break a Jezebel assignment if you have a Jezebel alignment. Stop allowing the spirit to manipulate you, to control you, to seduce you, and otherwise wreak havoc on your life, says the spirit of God. Take your stand. Jesus is more powerful than Jezebel. Never forget it, says the spirit of God. My, 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 my. Wish I'd have done a whole prayer broadcast on that, but we're going to progress. Revelation 2, 20, 1 Corinthians 15, 33, Psalm 12, 2 are the scripture references for today. Now the prayer starter and the decree. Father, help me break any and all Jezebel alignments in my life. Give me an intolerance and a righteous indignation regarding the Jezebel spirit. I decree flattering lips are bound together in my presence. I declare Jezebel's seduction has no power over me because my love for God guards my heart in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Father, we give you praise this morning. We give you praise this morning. We give you praise this morning. Oh God, we give you praise and we give you honor because Jesus is greater than Jezebel. We thank you that Jesus is greater than every principality. We thank you that Jesus is greater than every power. We thank you that Jesus is greater than every ruler of darkness. We thank you that Jesus is greater than the spiritual wickedness in high places. We thank you that Jesus is greater. Jesus is greater. Jesus is greater. There is no other name by which men should be saved. Jesus is greater. There is no other name by which devils will flee Jesus is greater there is no other name by which we will be healed Jesus is greater Jesus is greater Jesus is greater and the greater one lives on the inside of us we thank you Lord I ask you right now here we go to speak to every person on this broadcast who has a Jezebel spirit those who came in to thwart me those who came in to meddle with the broadcast we ask you Lord to encounter every Jezebel's heart 
with your love, a radical encounter in the name of Jesus. Would you help us, God, to see the Jezebel in us, oh dear? Would you help us, oh God, to see the Jezebelic tendencies, those thought processes that have been influenced by a demonic spirit? Would you help us, Lord, to see those ways in us? Like Hosea said, examine your ways. Oh God, would you help us today to examine our ways? We don't want to be like Jezebel. We don't want to be like Ahab. We don't want to be like Absalom. We don't want to be like these nefarious characters in your word that wreaked havoc on your people. God. So Jesus today, would you help us to repent? Would you help us to turn from our wicked ways, the ways of the world, the ways of the spirits that are not like you, the demon powers that are not like you. God, we don't want to be witchcraft releasers. We want to be glory releasers. So help us to see the Jezebel in us. Help us to see the Judas in us. Help us to see those tendencies of our flesh, which are uh, poor and pricked and prodded and perverted by spirits that want us to get on the wrong side of the word that want us to stand on the wrong side of God that want us to combat heaven heaven itself instead of the demons in the second heaven oh Jesus would you help us to get the Jezebel out of us would you help us Lord to get the uh, the Delilah's out of us oh God would you help us God would you help us to get the souls out of us oh come on oh come on oh come on don't act all high and righteous and mighty and pious on me right now oh Jesus there's no good thing in our flesh I said there's no good thing in our flesh there's no good thing in our flesh there's no good thing in our flesh but Christ in us the deliverer will deliver us from this body of death Christ in us this deliverer will deliver us from this evil tendency Christ in us the deliverer will deal with things that are in us that we've never seen before So we say, yes, God, deliver us from evil. Yes, God, show us where we've agreed with the devil. Yes, God, show us where our minds are unrenewed to your word. And there's darkness enveloping our lives. Oh, Jesus, help us, Lord, to break all ties, all soul ties, all ties of agreement, all ties, all ties, all ties with demon powers, all ties with wrong voices, all ties with spirits of error, all ties with abominations, all ties. Oh God, help us to break all ties. By your spirit, oh God, help us to break all ties, all ties with evil, all ties with the things that you hate, all ties, all ties. Help us to break all ties so that you can break the bonds. Oh Jesus, we've got to do our part. We've got to do our part. We've got to do our part. We've got to renounce it. We've got to renounce it. We've got to renounce it. Don't you see? You can't walk with someone unless you've agreed oh Jesus if we've agreed with the devil if we're walking with the devil if we're walking like the devil would you help us Jesus that we might break out of agreement break through of our wrong thought processes and see the light Jesus help us see the light we don't want to walk in a bondage we don't want to walk with fetters wrapped around us with chains around our ankles oh God we don't want to walk like the world walks we don't want to talk like the world talks we don't want to think like the world thinks and we certainly don't want to walk like demons walk roaming around looking for someone to devour looking for the competition looking for some gossip looking for some juicy gossip oh Jesus would you help us to stop acting like our adversary the devil (laughs) Jesus help us to break all ties help us to break all agreement help us to break out of this deception that we found ourselves in oh Jesus I don't know who I'm talking to someone's getting offended would you help us God to break free from offense because it is the bait of Satan would you help us Lord to break free from apathy that we just don't care about anything or anyone but ourselves oh Jesus would you help us break out of complacency would you help us break out of lukewarmness was that more acceptable to you today if I make it about behaviors rather than demons that are binding you does that make it easier for you to swallow today if I make it about the fruit of the demonic powers that are enslaving you does that make it a little better okay we'll do that father would you help us break free from the fear would you help 
help us break free from the apathy would you help us break out Lord of the depression would you help us to break out Lord of the anxiety would you help us to break out Lord of the bitterness would you help us to break out Lord of the unforgiveness would you help us to break out Lord of the resentment would you help us to break out Lord of the jealousy would you help us to break free Lord from the envy would you help us to break free Lord from the anger would you help us to break free Lord from the scorning ah Jesus you are the freedom bringer you are the deliverer God Jesus help us Lord to break free from the agreement with the things that cause the bondage in our hearts in our lives in our minds in our emotions Oh Jesus I've offended everybody this morning that's all right honey offense is the first step to your deliverance sometimes you got to stumble over something that's right in front of your face that you never saw before in order to see a better way sometimes when you're flat on your back after a fall you'll see a different perspective than you when you were running full speed in the wrong direction I said sometimes when you're lying flat on your back looking up toward heaven because you fell sometimes you'll gain a different perspective a better perspective than when you are running full speed on the devil's road ah oh I'm not mad at you God's not mad at you I'm mad with the devil that's kept you bound I'm mad with that Jezebel spirit that's kept you in bondage I'm mad with that whatever that thing is that's making you so unstable whatever that thing is that's making you so inconsistent whatever that thing is that's got you hot one day cold the next and lukewarm the third I said whatever that thing is that's got you hot for revival one day cold not caring about a thing in the world the next and lukewarm you don't you know take it or leave it Oh Jesus deliver us from these things so we can be more effective for your kingdom we're crying out for awakening we're crying out for revival oh God it's got to start with me it's got to start with you it's got to start with us oh Jesus pour out your spirit upon us God <laughs> but let us get things out of the way that are blocking the inflow ah we prayed yesterday if we cry out he'll pour out if we cry out he'll pour out if we cry out he'll pour out but if you ain't got no room to receive it what good does the poor do it just spills all over the floor God is not a waster he doesn't waste anything God doesn't waste anything he's not gonna pour out his spirit on us if we're not in position he's not gonna pour out his spirit on us if we're not ready to receive he's not gonna pour his spirit out on us if we refuse to agree with his leadership and set some things aside the childish things he's not gonna pour out his spirit on us no matter how much we cry out if we're not willing to crucify some flesh to make room Jesus would you help us would you help us today to be willing to see our stumbling blocks instead of ignoring them I just saw vision and it's like these stumbling blocks and some of you are you're just you're <laughs> you wonder why everything takes you so long you wonder why it's taking so long to get that promotion you wonder why it's taking so long to find that husband that wife you wonder why it's taking so long to get out of debt you want to know why it's taking so long for some of you because you're trying you're going the long way <laughs> you're trying to go around the stumbling block because you know it's there you know the anger's there you know the jealousy is there uh oh you know that depression's there uh oh you know that greed is there uh oh you know there's wrong motives there uh oh and it's a stumbling block to you and God is wanting God is wanting you to face down that stumbling block and cry out for deliverance from the things inside you that you keep tripping over but instead some of you are trying to go around the stumbling block but the stumbling block is miles wide and stories high and it takes you so long to get around it you're exhausted by the time you get halfway around the mountain so you stop and you give up and you don't get the promotion and you don't get the husband and you don't get the wife because you're not ready for it because you won't face the stumbling block oh Jesus I have gone the meddling see that's what happens when the intercessors pray I've gone to meddling I'm not meddling it's the Holy Ghost I saw a big old stumbling block <laughs> you stop trying to go around things that God wants you to face eh. stop trying to go around things that God wants you to face you can't escape something God wants to deal with in you you can't escape it you can't get away from it if God's got his finger on it 
He's going to deal with it. And you will not see uh, the, the level of promotion that you want in your life until you cooperate with God. All promotion comes from God. You will not see the fullness of the blessing that God wants for you as long as you are allowing the curses of the past to hold you back. You've got to face it. David had to face Goliath. <laughs> David had to face Goliath. Goliath was cursing him. Goliath was cursing him. He didn't run away and said, Oh, there's a curse. Oh, there's a giant. Oh, there's a stumbling block. He faced it. David, David could not get to his destiny without facing the Goliath. And neither can you. There was no going around Goliath. If David had tried to go around Goliath, Goliath would have struck him down. There was no going over Goliath. He was too big. He was too tall. David couldn't jump that high. There was no running away from Goliath. There would just be another Goliath in another direction. Oh, Jesus, would you help us today to stop trying to escape the things that you want us to face? To stop looking for a way of escape that's unlike your way of escape. Your way of escape sometimes is through, so help us, Lord, to be willing to walk through a thing, to face down a thing, in order to finally, finally, finally get where you want us to go. Jesus, 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 deliver us from evil, O God. Deliver us from the evil tendencies, O God. Help us, Lord, to face down whatever it is that's opposing us. Maybe we don't even know what it is. Maybe we don't even know what it is, but we can feel the resistance. Maybe, just maybe we've been blaming it on demon powers when it's really just our flesh. Jesus, let us not be deceived into thinking that this some some great principality that's been assigned to us to keep us back from our destiny when it's really just our stinking flesh when it's really just our rotten thinking when it's really just an unresolved hurt or a wound or a refusal to submit ourselves to you oh Jesus oh Jesus we don't want to be deceived oh God we don't want to be deceived oh God help us Lord to discipline ourselves help us Lord to buffet our bodies help us Lord to crucify our flesh help us Lord to submit our lives to you oh Jesus help us to stop blaming all of our problems on the devil when we cause at least as many by our own selves by agreeing with him willfully by allowing him to tempt us into things you've not called us to even though they look bright and shiny the devil told Jesus I'll give you all the the, the whole world I, I mean uh, it's mine to give you uh, I'll give you all these uh, these 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 the, the whole world is in my power to give it to you I'll give it to you <laughs> Jesus said no I'm not gonna get what belongs to me the devil's way oh there's something there I wish you'd hear me <laughs> the world already belonged to Jesus he created it Adam sold the lease to Satan but it ultimately was still in the power of God in other words he created it it was going to come back in his hands the right way there's some things God wants to put in your hands but he wants to do it his way in his timing and the devil is tempting the devil is tempting some of you to get ahead of God or the Lord saying the means don't justify the end the end don't justify the means the means don't justify the end and the end don't justify the means Jesus would you forgive us today for allowing the enemy to tempt us to get what we know you want us to have in a way that you didn't tell us to get it are you following me today the world was going to be given back to Jesus after he hung on that cross after he rose from the dead after he ascended to heaven he took the world back he took the keys to death hell and the grave he took it all back the world became under the dominion again of Jesus Christ but the devil tried to tempt him to go another way to get it a different way <sighs> How many of you are being tempted to go after a good thing the wrong way? How many of you are being tempted and how many of you have fallen into the temptation? How many of us have fallen into the temptation to get God's will in a way that doesn't please him? The means don't justify the end. The end don't justify the means. The end doesn't justify the means and the means don't justify the end. There's a right way. And there's a wrong way. Matthew 6, 3, 3 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added to you. Everything else will be added to you. Everything else will be added to you. God, help us to do it your way, to be willing to look at what is in us that is holding us back. The compromise, the compromise, the compromise that's in our hearts where we're willing to take shortcuts. <laughs> Or we are willing to do things that are out of order to see your will come to pass. And we're thinking that somehow we're going to be blessed in the process. And we're going to be blessed with the outcome when we're grieving your spirit. Oh God, would you help us, Lord? Would you help us, Lord, to do, to go, to be your way, to understand your ways? Because there's a breakthrough coming. I said, there's a breakthrough coming. When you choose some of you, I'm telling you the truth. If you just make, if you just make a decision today, if you just make a decision today, if you just make a decision today, if you just make a decision today to change the way you look at your situation, to go ahead and face that stumbling block, to let the Lord heal that wound, to let the Lord set your mind straight. If you just choose today the way of God, you would see breakthrough. Oh, Jesus, it's imminent. You'd see a breakthrough in your mind. And that's going to lead to a breakthrough in your outward circumstances. You got to have a breakthrough on the inside before you can have a breakthrough on the outside. This is your breakthrough. Oh, if you could just see it and not get so mad at me, if you could just see it and not tune me out, if you could just understand that this is the way to break through in your mind, break through in your emotions, break through in different parts of your inward being. Oh, Jesus, you got to get breakthrough on the inside before you can get breakthrough on the outside. And you're seeking and pushing and pressing and prodding and poking and trying to manipulate for a breakthrough on the outside when you don't understand. If you just let God do what he wants to do in you, you would see it. You would see the breakthrough. Face your stumbling block. Make your decision. No more procrastination. Because God has a marvelous plan for you. He's not forgotten about the promise. He has not forgotten about the promise. He has not forgotten about the promise. The keys are in your hands. You just don't know how to use them. You've been taught wrong. You've been taught wrong. You've been tempted. But I'm here to tell you today. I'm here to decree. The key to prosperity is already in your hand. I said I'm here to tell you today. I'm here to decree. The key to prosperity is already in your hand. Prosperous relationships, prosperous in your finances, prosperous in your body. The key to prosperity is already in your hand. I decree the key to prosperity is already in your hand. If you could just see it, if you just knew how to use it. <laughs> what is that key? What is that key? Would you recognize it? Would you know how to use it if you even saw it? I saw it in the scripture this morning. I saw it so clear and I saw it so plain. And I'm going to share it with you. This is your key. <laughs> it's in your hand already. It's in your hand, beloved. If you could just see that it's in your hand, if you just knew how to use it. Oh, the prosperity that you would see. The pent up prosperity that would be poured out upon you. Psalm 1-2. But those whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on it day and night, that person is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Listen, 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 listen. Whatever they do prospers. That's the key. I don't know if you caught it. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if you can understand it. I don't know if you'll use it. It's right there. It's right there in your face. Maybe you didn't catch it. Let me read it to you from another version. But they who delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night, 
They are like trees planted along the river bank, bearing fruit in each season. Their leaves never, 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 never wither, and they prosper in all they do. Ha ha ha! I decree the key to prosperity is in your hand. God has not called you to wither. Some of you are withering. Some of you are dying on the vine. But God wants you to be like a tree that's planted along the river bank, bearing fruit in each season. Continual fruit. Continual fruit. Continual fruit. Continual fruit. No withering. I break and bind the withering in Jesus' name, and I decree the key to prosperity is in your hand. God said, "If you do this, I'll do that." <laughs> If you do this, I'll do that. Hey, hey, hey! If you meditate on the law, if you meditate on the word, when in the day, no, in the day and the night. Ah, oh Jesus! It's a day and night thing. 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 Oh Jesus! Some of you are mad at me now because you realize you've got to do something. You just wanted to lay in the sun and have the rain fall and the blessings come without doing a thing. It doesn't work that way, beloved. The highest life comes through discipline and diligence. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Oh, I wish I could tell you that it's all puppy dog tails and butterflies and lollipops and clouds and feathers and gold dust. I'm not against any of those things, but my Bible says those who delight in the Lord's instruction. And meditate on it day and night. He or she is like a tree planted beside flowing streams. Oh Jesus! I don't know about you. I like the still waters. I like to walk beside the still waters. There's a time to walk beside the still waters. But I'll tell you the truth: if you're walking by the still waters, why don't you go ahead and meditate on the Word? While you're walking by the still waters, why? Why don't you go ahead and meditate on His precepts while you're walking by the still waters? Why don't you go ahead and meditate on His character until you get to the flowing streams? <laughs> until you get to the flowing streams, because those who meditate on the law of the Lord, the law of love, He is like a tree planted beside streams of flowing water, flowing streams. That bears its fruit in its season, and whose leaf does not wither. Listen, listen, listen. Wait for it. Whatever he does prospers. I said the key to prosperity is in your hand. I wish you could see it. Just go ahead and look at your hand right now. The Bible says, "Beloved, I would that you be in health and prosper, even as your soul prospers." You know how your soul prospers by meditating on the Word day and night. Oh, how many times I've understood the law of meditation! Oh, how many times I've set out to meditate on the word day and night, and I get the day part right, but the night part escapes me. What does that mean? I get the day part right, but the night escapes me. What does that mean? I get in the word in the morning, but I don't always get in the word in the night. You know what that means? It means I'm not receiving the fullness of my prosperity. Come on, I'm going to make this about me so that you don't get offended and hang up. The reality is, the Bible says, when we meditate on His Word day and night, Joshua one eight, when you meditate on His Word day and night, and be careful to do all that it says, then you will make your way prosperous. Then you will find good success. But many of us, many Christians, don't meditate on the Word at all, and God blesses them because He loves them. But they're not tapping in to the maximum blessing. They're not tapping in. To the greatest measure of prosperity, oh Jesus, they're not tapping in. Some of us are meditating on the word in the morning, but we're not getting to it at the night. What does that mean? We're not getting the fullness of the blessing. We're not getting the fullness of prosperity. That's the sad part. The good part is, you're ready for this. The good part is, are you ready for this? The good part is the key 
to prosperity is in your hand. The key to the flowing streams are in your hand. The key to the rivers of water are in your hand. The key to the production of fruit in season is in your hand. And when you take this key and when you use this key, whatever you do will prosper. When you take this key and you use this key, you will prosper in all you do. When you take this key and you use this key, whatever you do, it'll prosper. I wish I could get you to believe that this morning. It's so simple. It's so simple. Isn't it simple? God's word is not complicated. So many of us are searching for that deep word. Got to have that. Oh, that's deep. Oh, hashtag deep. <laughs> I'm not against the deep revelations, but this is so simple. Beloved, it's so simple. The key to your prosperity is in your hand. And when it gets in your mind, and comes out your mouth. No devil in hell will be able to stop you. No devil in hell will be able to stop your prosperity. His pleasure and passion is remaining true to the word of I am. Is that you? Is your pleasure and passion in remaining true to the word of the great I am? Meditating day and night in the true revelation of light. If that's you, if that's you, and if it's not, you can commit to it being you. <laughs> Will you commit to your pleasure and passion being found in remaining true to the word of the great I am? Meditating day and night in the true revelation of light. If that's you, this is your promise. Catch it. Make a commitment today. He, that's you, will be standing firm like a flourishing tree planted by God's design, deeply rooted by the brooks of bliss, bearing fruit in every season of his life. He is never dry, never fainting, ever blessed, ever prosperous. Father, help us today to make this decision. Help us today to make this quality decision. Would you help us today not to say yes in a moment of passion and allow the oppression to erode our passion, the busyness of life to steal our commitment. But help us, Lord, from this day on to meditate on your word day and night so that we can walk in continual blessing and prosperity in everything we do in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Come on, come on. That's a good word. That is a good word. That is a good word. I'm thinking to try to help you do that somehow. I don't know what that looks like, but that's a good word. What if, what if we really grabbed hold? What if, what if we meditated on the word? I'm not talking about spending two hours in the morning and two hours at night. What if you just took 15 minutes and meditated on a scripture? What if you did that? What would happen if you did it day and night like the Bible says? Do you know how many things the Bible says about day and night? A lot. Some of you, maybe, who are listening to the replay aren't even reading the word in the morning. And I'm glad you're listening to me and you need to, you need to do that because that's how, I mean, if you were led to do that, you need to do that. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just a different way. You don't need to do anything but what the Lord tells you. But there's nothing wrong with listening to me. That's a good thing. But that doesn't replace your time with God. This is to enhance your time with God. This is to give you prophetic direction and instruction to light a fire under you in prayer, to release words of knowledge and prophecy that helps you in your journey. That's what this is for. We've got to get this. I've got to get it. Come on now. I want you to share this with somebody right now. I've got something more to say. We've got to get this. Somebody needs to shout amen. Somebody needs to sow into this today. Today would be a good day to sow. Listen, sow into this today if you can. If you feel so led, sow. JenniferLeClaire.org slash donate. You can use the cash app is dollar sign Jennifer LeClaire. You can use the text to give. 754-701-2161. Text the word pray. You can use Venmo. Venmo is at Jennifer LeClaire. It would be a good day to sow if you feel led. It's always a good day to sow when you feel led, but sometimes you need to be prompted. It's times like this when you sow a seed. When your faith is high, when you have a key, when you say, I'm committing to this, you can't buy a breakthrough, but you can sow a seed. You can use the P.O. Box, P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303. 
Elijah Company Training for Profits. If you're going to get in on that, you better get in on it now because it's about to go bye-bye. The opportunity is about to go away. You're going to want to get it. This is training for profits. This is not how to hear God's voice. This is not how to pray. This, these are how you posture yourself as a prophet. It's very relevant to issues we're seeing and facing today. I'm seeing such messes out there in the prophetic. I'm seeing a lot of great stuff too. But a lot of it's because people haven't been trained. A lot of the messes are because people haven't been trained. So we're going to be talking about issues that are relevant for the day we're in. Real practical, how do I carry myself? You, if you're a prophet, you should already know how to hear the voice of God. Okay, so I'm not teaching you that because you should know that. Elijah Company Training for Profits, jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. The Awakening Fast, I do want to tell you about that. The Awakening Fast, 21 Days of Fasting for Awakening and Revival. I'm getting a lot of questions about this, guys. My answer to you, my short answer is go to awakeninghouseofprayer.com slash fast and sign up for the kickoff meeting where you can watch. If you're not in South Florida, you'll be able to watch it via video. Uh, but that's where you're going to, uh, when you register on the day of the event, that's when you're going to get the link and that's when you're going to get all the instructions on the fast. Okay. Sign up for that. Go to awakeninghouseofprayer.com slash fast and sign up for the kickoff. And then if you want to, there's also a, a course. There's also a course, 21 day course where I walk you through the devotions and encourage you and pray with you and talk with you. Um, that's a 21 day course. There's also a devotional. All right. God bless you guys. I love you. I'll be back with you later tomorrow.